Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy September 25th. It's a Monday, guys, here in Michigan. A beautiful fall day. Sun is out. It's shining. I see bees flying around. We got some apples still full in this tree over here. We got two apple trees on a property. Really blooming. Really looking beautiful. They're ready to eat, man. Who needs to go down to Walmart? We got apples here. Thank you, God Almighty. Uh, he's a good, good father. He knows the prices of apples. <laughs> These apple trees hardly ever bloom. One, one blooms. The other one's not nothing um it's the opposite every year since i've been here for four years almost every year it's apples bloom on one and not the other one's alive one's dead one's producing fruit the other one's not and it kind of reminded me of christians who walk in the flesh don't produce any fruit and without god as a non-believer they don't produce any fruit but the one blooming it's got the big red apples over there i'll run over there shortly here after the video and give you a, a good visual of that it's so pretty and when we're connected to the vine jesus christ man we can produce fruit we can produce what we need when we need it he's got he, he'll supply what you need like the the, the tree is rooted in the ground you know in some good soil and that's us being rooted in deep in god's word right and then we're connected to god he's the vine he makes the fruit grow right uh, on the tree physically and in our lives spiritually and he can produce apples on the tree right <laughs> he can produce hope peace joy comfort strength courage on our tree of, is our fruit fruit of the spirit is what god produces through us spiritually and it's just a beautiful thing and i'll take you over there in a few minutes and check that out before we end the video and i'm uh, just coming to you today today out of the uh, jesus listens a beautiful christian sister sarah young holy spirit inspired got three great um, bible verses we're going to kick it off with the first one it's one of one i mean it's become one of my favorite scriptures in the bible as i'm going to fix the camera here a little bit um is that you know, when we pray, we talk to God, you know, and um, when we read the word of God, now he's speaking to us because why? Because God's uh, apostle Paul says God's breath is infused in every word of this Bible. That's why when you read the Bible, it's something special. It don't just touch your mind. It touches your heart, man. It touches your whole soul, your whole being, right? God, praise the Lord, right? But when you read like a Western novel, a romance novel, a science fiction novel, what happens there? Really nothing. It's like dead, right? It's just in your mind. It doesn't touch your heart. It doesn't t touch you spiritually like God's word. It's a connection because this word is alive. He's alive and well. Hallelujah. We serve the one true God, guys. Praise the Lord. But the title of today's devotional, I haven't really asked the Holy Spirit in it. It's, I come wearily into your presence. And that's what we, we're all weary in this world that, that's set up to steal, excuse me, steal, kill, and destroy and when Satan's attacking us, you know, whether it's through lost souls doing the devil's work, other human beings, or spiritually, physically or spiritually, we get weary, man. You know, like Jesus got weary when he was carrying a cross to Calvary. Um, we're bound to get weary. If Jesus got weary, guess what? We're going to we're gonna get weary. Um, Jesus had to go through, man, the hardest of hard times, and we're going to go through hard times. Why is that? You know, God loves us. Yeah, he loves us enough that we got to put him. He died for us already. We don't owe him a darn thing. Now we just pick up our crosses on a, on a daily basis out of loyalty and love for Jesus after everything he went through. Now it's time for us to sacrifice and put our lives down, pick our crosses up. And I want you all to know that we're here for sacrifice. We're going to go through the good, the bad, and the ugly, all of them, like a Clint Eastwood movie, right? True story, right? Jesus suffered at the cross worse than anybody. Why? It wasn't for nothing. There was purpose behind his pain and there's purpose behind your pain today. So when you're feeling weary and things are getting really heavy, just know it's normal and nothing's wrong with you and nothing's wrong with me. It's normal. We're in the flesh. We're, 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 um, the, the odds are against us already. Jesus came and gave us the better odds now. Praise God, right? We're walking in the spirit now. When we walk in the spirit, when we're weary, go into prayer. We're in the presence of God. I can't wait to read this scripture, the Holy Spirit. You see those God bumps on me. People call them goosebumps, but they come from God up in heaven. Hallelujah. God bumps, baby. Hallelujah. If you don't know, now you know. We're not of this secular world. We're from the kingdom of heaven. I'm just visiting. So are you as a brother and sister, followers of Christ. And um, Jesus does indeed give true rest in a, in a restless world, right? Praise the Lord. He gets a geek in this uncomfortable world. He comforts us. That's what the Holy Spirit is, the comforter. It's the connection. It's God's almighty presence living within us, an attribute characteristic of God. Through Jesus, we receive that Holy Spirit, man. And only when we go into God's presence will we have peace. Will We will have strength. Only we will have comfort. Only in the presence of God. 
And um, that's that's it's amazing, right? It's like being in the dark room, and we won't have light to be able to see what we need to see until we flip the light switch on. Well, Jesus Christ, guys, is the light of the world. He lives within us. Flip that switch, that light switch, Jesus, boom, and now we can see. Not our stuff in our houses, my cabin, right? The TV remote, the food, you know, way to the refrigerator. <laughs> but we can see now hope. We can see strength. We can see self-control and discipline. We can see courage. We can see peace, joy. And what's missing in this world is forgiveness. And that's what it's all about, guys, you know, as well. But here, um, I come wearily into your presence is the title. We're all weary right now. How about you? I know I'm weary. Whew, I'm getting worn down, y'all. <laughs> I tell you, man, my flesh is weak and the Lord makes me strong. And I know where my strength is found. Check this out. I mean, Superman, I mean, you know, it's a fictitious character, made up character, comic book character. But Clark Kent really didn't need to run into a you know into the uh uh what is it the phone booth right which is you don't see any anymore to change into superman you know he always you know, he always found one right we always got to find god and then what happened clark kent turned into superman we're all clark kent's we're all weak in the flesh and now we're strong when we walk in the spirit when we invite god into our lives we can only find true rest in the presence uh, I say uh, the Holy Spirit gave me before, we can only find peace in the presence of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. There is no peace here on earth. Jesus is the only way, right? He's the Prince of Peace and the only way we can find peace in this restless world of anxiety and fear and just chaos and mayhem. The only peace is found in the presence of God. And that's what we need to do. Come wearily into, into his presence. And that's what you and I need to do on a daily basis. Hallelujah. Let's get this, guys. It's uh, Matthew chapter 11, uh, verses 28 and 20, uh, 28 through 30, I'm going to read. Red letters, Jesus speaking. Let's get it. Hallelujah. Let's go, like my brothers at the uh, Kingdom Fire uh, <laughs> ministry say in uh and um, uh, Kingdom Recovery say, a bunch of great people, man, brothers and sisters in Christ holding it down for the Lord. They say, let's go. Let's get it. <laughs> let's go, they say. Let's go right now. Red letters, Jesus speaking, 11, chapter 11, 28 through 30. Matthew, let's go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Right now, man, are you laboring? Are you feeling Are you feeling heaviness? Are you feeling physically, spiritually? Are you jacked up right now? Are you just feeling like you just want to give up? You're feeling hopeless. You're feeling worried. All of these are attacks of the enemy. Look, it's the flesh as well. But then the, as soon as the enemy, you know, sees us staying in the flesh and not stepping into the spirit, they have no chance. But as soon as we're in the flesh and we start going, oh, man, it's a miserable day. Oh, it's going to be hopeless. Oh, the bills are due. What am I going to do? Guess what? You just invited, you know, we praise God and he brings healing and, and victory. Now, when you're complaining, now you're worshiping the devil and he's going to make sure what you're saying, your complaints will come true. Just as our Lord Almighty above will do that same thing. But when we speak healing, when we speak victory, boom, it comes, it comes, it comes, right? It rains down. Prayers go up. Blessings come down, right? Praise the Lord. But if we're sitting around complaining about how weary we are, right? And it's okay, but we don't want to stay there because the demons will hear and come and make sure you're more wearier and add on to your load. And now you're really weighed down, feeling um, past, past mistakes today. And we don't need to visit the past because today's a new day. And we don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will have its own worries. We worry about now and right now, the present time you're living in. And we got God Almighty living within us to come to our rescue. Praise the Lord. Verse 11 or verse 29 says, take my yoke, you, and learn from me. I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke, Jesus is speaking again, 30 says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Satan's yoke is hard and heavy, right? His burden is heavy, right? It's the opposite of God. So why would we want to stay walking in the flesh? Why would we want to stay Clark Kent's when we can be supermen, right? A, 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 a Christian who doesn't pray and invite God into the situation and walk in the spirit and God's power would be like Superman walking around instead of flying, how crazy would that be? Or you having a Lamborghini outside or a Corvette, whatever your favorite car or truck is, and you walk by it to go to the bus stop and you don't even drive it. That's how ludicrous it is for all of us to not call on the Lord God Almighty for his power, his sovereignty, his goodness and strength reign over everything. So he lives within us. 
when he's for us, who can be against us? No weapon formed against us shall prosper ever unless we let it prosper and we don't pray. If we don't pray, we're victims. When we pray, hallelujah, we are victorious. The V-I-C-T-O-R-Y victory is what we get every time. There's not a battle we can lose. Man, get it, got it good. If you don't know, now you know. Lay down your problems and worries, okay? All right, guys, we're going to get into this right now. I come wearily into your presence, feeling weighed down by yesterday's failures. How about you? You feeling weighed down by yesterday's failures? Well, forget about them. Lay them at the cross, give them to the Lord, and let him clean the slate for you. Lighten your load right now. We don't have to worry about yesterday. It's gone. Today's today, and we ain't promised tomorrow, so we're living in the moment right now. I wish I could uh, undo my decisions that I that I now regret. We all make mistakes. We're in the flesh. It's going to happen. Our, our, our mistakes did not, do not define the present and the future. Jesus does. Praise the Lord. However, I know that the past is behind the realm of the realm of change. It cannot be undone. Even you, though you live in timeless, you live in timeless, respect the boundaries of time that exist in this world. So I don't want to waste energy bemoaning bad choices I have made. We don't want to stay in regret, guys. We don't want to cry a river, right? We don't want to drown in the river. We just cry. You understand what I'm saying, right? Praise the Lord. Instead, I ask for you to forgive me and help me learn from my mistakes. And this is what we do. When we make mistakes, look, we're going to make mistakes. We're Christians. Listen to me. We're Christians. We're not perfect. We are forgiven. The world who don't believe in Jesus do, does not have the opportunity or the... Um, the opportunity, help me, Holy Spirit, or the convenience of us or the or the blessing of the grace of God through Jesus' death at the cross. So when we sin today, we ask for forgiveness right away, repentance, right on the spot. You cuss, you smoke, you drink, um, you know, you gossip, you get caught up in anger or lust. We got to repent right then and there. Sin's a sin. Right is right, wrong is wrong, and it always will be that way. So we need to we need to go into repentance and ask for forgiveness because sin and regret and worry they're all sin against God. When we worry, we're sinning against God. We're grieving God. Like our worry, like we're worrying because we think God can't handle it. Of course he can. We just need to focus. Like Peter, when he sunk in the, in the ocean that day, he focused on the storm and not Jesus who could calm the storm. But here's what we want to do. When we make mistakes, listen, it's okay. We're in the flesh. We're in a fallen world. We're in the flesh where we're, we were brought into this generational curse. God knew this. He sent Jesus to die, not only to give us salvation, but for you to have forgiveness right now. Sin is very heavy and he will lighten your load. Hallelujah. Okay. We can't change it, but Jesus can take it away from us when we make a mistake, man. And it's like hitting the reset button when you ask Jesus in and say, Lord, forgive me. Please help me now in this area. Now it says here, when I'm feeling weighed down by things I regret, it's as if I'm dragging my failures around like heavy chains clamped to my ankles. We've all been there, man. You know, but Jesus Christ is who? The chain breaker, baby. Hallelujah. He will break any chain that Satan puts on you and bound you up because we don't we're not in bondage of Satan no more into his slavery of sin. The law of Jesus Christ, he came, he's the chain breaker. We live under the law of the Lord. The Galatians chapter 5, the fruit of the spirit, chapter 5 verses 22 and 23. Praise the Lord. Now listen to me. When you feel like you're dragging failures around and regrets, etc., and the sin, right? People don't repent anymore. And we got Christians and brothers, sisters walking around feeling heavy and weighed down. And you're like, wow, if that's what having Jesus Christ in my life's about, I don't want none of him, right? So we got to show by example, when things weigh us down, we got an almighty God who has all the muscle to lift it off of us and help us continue on this journey, on this road of life that he has us going down, but not only walking it, but dancing with excitement and a smile on your face to encourage and uplift and give hope to the hopeless and to encourage the one people, the people out who are discouraged by this world and its hateful ways of lies and fantasy of Satan. And and the hatred and the gossip, everything that goes on here. Praise the Lord. So Jesus is the chain breaker. At such times, I find it beneficial to picture you coming to my rescue and cutting off those chains. Praise the Lord. He is the chain breaker, y'all. He has the muscle to break those chains. That when Satan puts that chains on your bondage of sin, regret, hopelessness, um, sin of any kind, call on the Lord. He's muscle. Jesus strong. He will break those chains. 
You come to set your followers free, and I want to walk in the truth that I am free indeed, y'all. We are free indeed. I'm going to go to the book of John, chapter 8, verse 36, and it goes like this. Uh, Therefore, red letters, Jesus speaking, therefore... If the sun makes you free, you are sh you shall be free indeed. Look, we are all free indeed. You don't have to stay in those heavy chains. You don't have to stay in that dark place. We got the light of the world. Look at that light of the world. God is good, right? The sun comes shining through the cloud on that on that. God, cue, cue it up, man. The Holy Spirit, man. The light of the world. As the sun lights up the world in the physical, Jesus Christ will light your life up spiritually. As the sun is the physical, the sun is the physical light of the world. Jesus Christ is the spiritual light of the world. Let him light that world up in your darkness that Satan has got you in those chains, and let him come in and shine that victory down and break those chains he is the chain breaker say it jesus can break those chains that i'm in right now be free and, and what does he say therefore if the son makes you free you shall be free indeed and free indeed you are guys we are free from sin we are free from depression anxiety addiction of any kind we don't have to be in slavery of any kind no more no more guys praise the lord hallelujah what a powerful message guys I'm going to go ahead and read on. Lord, I rejoice that you redeem my failures. Let's give him a hallelujah right now. Wherever you are, wherever time you listen to this, let's give a hallelujah and praise God for all he's worth, man. Hallelujah, man. He is so worthy to be praised, guys. Man, he sets us free. He, get, he, he sent us light. Jesus Christ, his beautiful son, to die for us, for our sins, to give us light in a dark world, to see truth, to see love, to see hope, to see encouragement, to see um, strength, um, boldness, uh, love and forgiveness for other people. And we get to see a clear path right into the kingdom of heaven. Come on now. Hallelujah. Forgive me and forgive me and leading me along these paths of newness forgiving me and leading me along these paths of newness please forgive me this flesh is kicked in holy spirit more let more less of daryl more of you hallelujah i'm all excited here but guys we gotta you know give god thanks guys and rejoice in his beautiful presence presence his love his forgiveness through jesus's death at the cross grace god's redemption at christ's expense we have mercy we're forgiven we go into heaven but for now until we go into heaven we're still fighting the good fight of faith each and every day and when Satan again tries to sneak up on you and like, you know, my friends, when we were little kids, we had fake handcuffs and they are real handcuffs with the metal keys. You remember them, right? My mother hated those. Everybody, chain, you know, handcuffing our friends to the, the telephone poles and running away. <laughs> But when Satan sneaks up on you today and tries to handcuff you and put those chains on you, right? Those heavy chains of depression, addiction, hopelessness, anger, lust, um, regret, um, whatever it might be. Hopelessness, fear is a big one for him. Call on Jesus, man. He's got the key. He's the key to unlock the lock that holds those chains bound around your ankles, man, weighing you down from walking through and dancing through life, man, like we all should be as Christians. We shouldn't be walking around with our heads down. We should have them high. We should be dancing. We should be smiling. We should be laughing. We should be encouraging people along the way on this path, on this road of life, guys, letting the Holy Spirit flow. Stay in the presence of the Lord, guys. The dark place we live, and if we don't have God, we're in darkness. He is the light of the world. When you call on the Lord, now we're in, we're in his presence, and we are free indeed from anything that the enemy tries to put us in bondage, in prison. We are free. Jesus is, he sets us free. Please show me, right? We're asking the Lord, please show me that you... That the changes you want me to make, that you want me to make, and guide me along the right path. Guys, listen to me. This road, this life, Satan will lead you down the wrong roads, the wrong paths, because he don't want you on the right path following Jesus. Because if you got Jesus, you got power. If you got Jesus, you got truth. If you got Jesus, you got strength. If you got Jesus, y'all, hallelujah, let me hear it. You got victory, the V-I-C-T-O-R-Y, victory. That's what I'm talking about. We got the Lord God Almighty on our side. There is not a battle we can lose. And again, it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to sin, but it's not okay to practice sinning. We cannot take the Lord Jesus' death at the cross for, 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 um, for uh, granted. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give me remembrance of that word. We cannot keep in a life of sin. You know right from wrong. You need to call God into those areas of your life where you can't get it right and where you keep doing wrong and he will make it right. You have to invite him into that area of your life, man, okay? 
That's all I got to say today. Hallelujah. Diddly, diddly, dee. And we just brought the good word to thee. I say we, me and the Holy Spirit. I'm just here, man. He's using me as his voice box, the good Lord Almighty. Let, let Be a mouthpiece for the Lord. Be his hands and feet in this world, man. Let's make this world a brighter and better place. A brighter, like the sun, baby. And let's, let's shine like Jesus did, man. And let him shine through us, I should say. Guys, um, you know, we live in a dark world. We just want to be more like Jesus. A lot less like Daryl. A lot less like you and more more like Jesus. That's where the victory is found. When we're walking in the spirit, now we're Superman and women flying around. Woo, yeah. We ain't walking around like Clark Kent. <laughs> walking in the flesh. You see what I'm saying? Get it, got it, good. Praise them, hallelujah. Guys, I love you. And and, and share these messages, man. It got nothing to do with Brother Daryl, man. I'm just here. I'm Brother Daryl Mack, and we are on the attack for the kingdom of heaven. Share these messages. They're not mine. They're God's. I'm just delivering them. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit having his way today and forever until the good Lord takes that last breath out of my lung and... <gasps> My last breath here, hallelujah, is first breath in heaven, Woohoo! hallelujah, praise them all day, man, I'm excited, I'm going to get this posted up and share it, share it, share it, and um, let's be that beacon of light to those that are walking in darkness, let's give the hopeless hope, and let's make the people that feel hated, let's give them that Jesus love, enemies or not, it's easy to love your family, let's love on them uh, enemies, all right, because that's, that's what they need. They need love. We don't reward evil with evil, but evil with good. Praise God. Someone needed to hear that. I wasn't even going to say none of this stuff. But remember, when you're weary, go to Jesus Christ. Call upon his mighty name. There's power in the blood, power in his name, and that power lives and resides in you. And all you do, you're one prayer away from the victory, the V-I-C-T-O-R-Y, right now. When Satan puts those heavy chains on you, Jesus Christ is who? The chain breaker. Hallelujah. Peace be with you. If the good Lord takes me home, I will leave the lights on like Motel 6. Hallelujah. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Woo. Hallelujah. <laughs>